Vibrant, vibrant, vibrant music teaching. Proven and practical tips, strategies, and ideas for music teachers. You're listening to episode 101 of the Vibrant Music Teaching Podcast. I'm Nicola Canton, this is the first episode in our Vibrant Music Studio 101 series, and this building block is called Deliberate. Hey there lovely teachers and welcome to this new series that I'm calling Vibrant Music Studio 101. So starting from this episode, number 101, For the next 10 episodes, I'm going to be going into foundational concepts that I think are important for all music teachers. Everyone running a music studio or thinking about running one should be considering each of these 10 concepts in their teaching and their business. So we're going to go into each one, one by one in each episode for the next 10 episodes. I'm hoping that this will be a valuable resource that you can come back to and refer to again and again, because these are foundational things, but they're definitely not beginner-only concepts. They're things that we need to reteach ourselves as teachers again and again over the years. So our first foundational word, or we could call it a mantra or an intention, is deliberate. What do I mean by deliberate? Well, the real point here is that I want you to take your business seriously. I want you to be deliberate about the fact that you're setting up a business because you are. If you are running your own studio and not working for someone else, then you will be a business owner. Like it or not, it's happening. So what we want to do is be deliberate about that fact, deliberate about how we run our business, and accept this identity as a business owner and take ourselves seriously. So that's step one. Accept that you are a business owner. Or, if you don't want to accept that you are a business owner, go work for someone else. That's fine. But if you're going to work for yourself, you need to accept that you own a business. Even if you only have two students, even if you do this on the side of something else, even if you don't really want to own a business, you are going to run one. So the sooner you can get on board with that fact, the better off you will be. You are going to save yourself so much stress and worry if you just take on that identity as a business owner and start being deliberate about all the things within your business. So whatever decisions you're making, whether this is your first year of teaching or your 50th, whatever decisions you're making for your studio, for your business, ask yourself if a business would do this. Let me give you some examples of things businesses would and would not do. Businesses would, good businesses would, care for all of their customers, equally. Now the place we go wrong with this as studio owners is that we try to go over and above expectations for one customer. We think we're being caring, we think we're looking after people when we make exceptions and go the extra mile. But if we're a business, and we have lots of different, all equally important customers, then we can't do that. We have to treat them equally. Equally well, yes, but equally. You can't go running around helping and putting in extra work for every one of your 40 students. Or every one of your five students. So don't do it for one of them. Yes, you can do the occasional thing extra, and that's fine, but it needs to be a consistent part of how you run your business. You can make customers, students, parents, feel special without running yourself ragged and running around after them and making exceptions and yada yada yada. So businesses would treat all their customers equally well. Businesses would also communicate clearly and professionally. A business is not going to necessarily write on Facebook Messenger, although some will now, but they're not going to write as if they're buddies with someone, right? You're not their buddy. They're your customer. And you need to treat them as such. 
And it will end up making you a stronger business because of it. It doesn't mean you need to be cold or clinical. We all know businesses that are friendly and warm. So model yourself after one of those, but communicate clearly and professionally at all times. Businesses also, good businesses, have standard policies and procedures. They don't do things on the fly. If they do, they quickly run themselves out of business because it's impossible to run an efficient business if you're not repeating any processes. So, set up processes and procedures so that you can repeat them again and again. Businesses also make money on purpose, not by accident. Businesses look at their numbers and plan for them and plan to make money because otherwise you can't continue to be in business, can you? If every studio owner started taking their finances seriously, honestly, our industry as a whole would be so much better for it. Businesses also have some kind of a dress code. It could be spoken or unspoken, written or unwritten. But there's some way they dress. And I'm not here to advocate for everyone dressing smart casual or us all wearing suits or anything like that. Because we all live in different parts of the world, in different cultures. And that has a large influence on what's going to be appropriate to wear. If you live in a hot climate, I'm not saying you can't wear shorts. What I am saying is you should be considered about the way you dress because it does have an impact on how you're perceived. So if you haven't ever done this, think about what the guidelines would be that you would give to someone else if they were going to work for you in your studio, even if you're a solo teacher. Are ripped jeans acceptable? Can people wear sandals? Can they wear jeans at all? Do they need to wear a shirt at all times? Again, this will depend on where you are. Because in some cultures, pretty much every office worker is wearing shorts and flip-flops. And that's fine. But if you live somewhere where even a fairly casual job is going to mean dressing up a little bit, like you would here, actually, then you might want to consider that for your studio as well. Businesses also have office hours. They don't answer texts at midnight unless they're an emergency service. And, as I've said many times, there is no such thing as a piano teaching emergency. They do not exist, okay? I promise. I've never seen one, and I don't think I ever will. So, set up some office hours for yourself. Don't just be answering texts and emails and calls at every time of the day. It's going to cause you stress and it's not going to help your customer's perception of you. Those are just a few simple examples of things businesses might do, but we're definitely going to be going into this in more detail over the next few episodes in our Vibrant Music Studio 101 series. For now, as your homework for this episode in our foundation series, I want you to think about this word deliberate and about the idea of taking yourself seriously and taking on, embracing even, the identity of a business owner. Start thinking about what it would feel like to be proud of the fact that you own your own business. And if that's a bit uncomfortable for you, maybe write to yourself about it, about why it makes you feel uncomfortable. Consider where these feelings come from, whether it's shame about money, Perhaps uncertainty about your own abilities or a feeling of imposter syndrome. Think about where it comes from. That's your homework for this week. And if you already embrace this identity, if you're already pretty deliberate about how you run your studio and treating us as a business, then congratulations. Wear your business owner badge with pride and continue on to next week's episode. In episode 102, we'll be continuing this foundation series. Each week for the next 10 weeks, we're considering a different part of our business and how we can run them better. So I hope you'll join me for that one. Until next week, bye for now. 
Early on in this pandemic, I decided to keep the podcast a pandemic panic free zone as teachers look for a bit of respite from what's going on in the world right now. And that's going to continue. But if you do need access to resources, we absolutely have them available for you to help you improve your online teaching game, to get you set up, to help you with whatever you need. So if you're not a member, you can sign up using the coupon code online right now. You can use that for monthly membership and it will get you one week trial to the membership for just one dollar so that you can test it out and get access to the resources that you need. Games for online teaching, creative ideas and tech help as well. If you are a member, all you need to do is jump over to the library or into our community forums and we'll be able to help you there. See you on the inside.